Hey everybody, welcome to Practical Alchemy. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to install bits like this one into your digital tool library so that you can use them for CNC and millwork. Overall, this process is pretty simple once you know how to do it. So first thing we're gonna do is navigate over here from the design tab into the manufacturing tab. And you're gonna see the entire top ribbon bar has changed to some new functionality. Where we wanna focus is over here underneath management. There is an option to pull up the tool library. And once you pull up the tool library, this is the pop-up that you will see. So I've already got some tools loaded in, uh, so don't worry about that. But basically, when you look at the sidebar here, you're going to see a few different tools. First is the tools that are loaded into the document. So because I've already created a CNC setup for this class document, there is a bit already. Um, what you really want to look at here, though, is the cloud. So the cloud is where you're going to create a tool library um, that will be stored to your Fusion 360 account, which is really nice. If your computer ever crashes, you'll be able to pull those bits up. So ideally, I would recommend that you store bits on the cloud. You can also store bits locally, um, and there is a Fusion 360 stock library uh, with a lot of different tool options that you can browse. But for right now, we are going to focus here on the cloud. First thing that you're going to do is you're going to create a new bit library. So I've already got my Practical Alchemy bits, but I'm going to start from scratch and show you what to do. So right click on cloud, and we are going to create a new library. And today we are going to call that the tutorial library. And when I click on it, there is going to be no data, and I need to start installing some bits. In order to create a new tool, what you're going to do is go up here to the plus sign, and you're going to see that it's going to bring up a menu with a lot of different bit types. The bit that I'm going to be installing today as part of this tutorial is the Jenny bit. I have run a Onefinity CNC machine, which is awesome, and I use this compression bit all the time. So what we're going to do is we are going to select the flat end mill bit type. And now you're going to see this dialog box with a lot of different options. And we're just going to walk through each tab. And once you go through this, I think it's going to be pretty easy for you to understand. So first thing that we're going to do is write the description. So this is going to be our Jenny upcut. The vendor is going to be carbide. And the product ID, this is where you're going to put the product information. All of this is optional, by the way. You do not have to do any of this information, but it's really great for you to have it. If I just look right up here, it actually does have a product ID number. I'm not going to type that whole thing in just for speed. Just call it 98 and then the product link. So typically I will put the website here so that I can go back and find this bit later once it inevitably breaks or wears out. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in here. All right. So now we're going to move to the next tab, which is the cutter tab. The cutter tab is the most important in terms of what we're going to need for actually creating our bit digitally. You can see the type we've already described. You can go from inches to millimeters, spindle rotation, and the number of flutes. So this is actually only a two flute design. So I'm going to turn this down to two. Uh, and this is a carbide bit. So you can select the material from the drop down. Next up, this is probably the most important tab right here, because this is going to define all of the geometry information for your bit. Um, a lot of this type of information this type of information you are going to be pulling from the product description. So you can see here, if I scroll down in the product description, it is going to tell me the diameter, the overall length, the flute length, the upcut, and the transition. So diameter. And you, what's really nice is when you click on these dialog boxes, it's going to bring up a little dimensioning arrow system to help show you what you're looking for. So we're just going to start walking through and pulling the information from the website and putting it in the data table. Diameter is 0.25. Overall length is 2.5. Length below the holder. Honestly, these two dimensions are not super specific for this case because I'm going to be installing them manually. Really, all that matters is the flute length. 
Um, so shoulder length, we'll just set that. It's not called out, so I'm gonna describe that as 1.15. And as you can see, as I adjust this, it is adjusting the 3D geometry of the bit on the side. So you're seeing it change in real time to reflect the dimensions that I'm putting in. All right, so next thing are going to be the shaft and the holder tabs. Because I am running a Makita router on a hobbyist CNC, I don't store either of these information. Uh, I rely on myself to make sure that I'm not going to uh, bury the holder in the machine. So I'm actually going to skip over both of these tabs. Then I'm going to navigate over to the cutting data tab. Underneath the cutting data tab, you're going to see the default preset where you can put in the information for the speeds and the feed rates, which lots of videos that you can watch to talk about how to set speeds and feeds depending on the material. Luckily, uh, the Jenny bits provide a table for basic speed and feed information that I can refer to. Now, what I wanna show you is Underneath here, you can actually create different presets based off of the material, because every material that you cut are going to need different feeds and speeds. So if I hit the plus sign here, I can add a preset for plywood, which is the most basic setting. So when I go into the speeds and feeds, I actually don't care about the spindle speed because I'm gonna set it by hand on the Makita. The feed rate, which is going to be 100 inches per minute, the ramp feed rate, which is going to be 90, and the plunge feed rate, which is going to be 33. All right. And then there's also some options to go ahead and set up what your speed step down and your step overs are going to be. Typically, I'll set these by hand uh, in the toolpath, and I'm going to disable the coolant. What's really great is that I can use that for my plywood, but I can also store feeds and speeds for uh, urethane. I can have a special speed and feed rate set for that. And then next is the post processor. So the pros processor really comes in if you are doing tool changes as part of your program. If you're running the free version of Fusion, which you are very likely to be doing if you're watching this tutorial because you're just learning, you actually cannot do tool changes as part of the G code. You have to export them individually, but in order to support it, you would just click this here to support tool changes and then you're going to hit accept and your bit is set up. If I need to make any edits, I can just double click on this and reopen the tool and then hit accept once I've made my changes. You can see really cool here, I've got the bit loaded and I can also see all of my uh, presets. I can delete those, I can edit those from here and now my bit is set and I'm gonna continue to add new bits as I go for every single tool that I have in my library. So now that you know how to create a tool from scratch, I want to show you a few other things that you can do in the tool library. Number one is that you can copy and paste bits from one library to another. So for example, if I've got a 3 16th ball in mill and I want to use the Fusion 360 basic bit here, I can come down, see what milling tools I've got. I can see a 3 16th inch ball and mill. I am going to right click on that, copy the tool, then I can go over to my tutorials library and paste that tool. And you can see the advantage here is that it's already preloaded with a lot of different uh, feeds and speed rates that I could use. Always recommend that you're going to double check those before you just assume that whatever is loaded in with the bit is correct. Uh, so advantages and disadvantages here. Advantages is saves you a lot of time by copying, pasting bits and, and modifying those versus creating them from scratch. But you do wanna make sure that you go back and check all those speeds and speeds to make sure that you don't, one, ruin your workpiece and two, destroy your bit. All right, so the next thing that I wanna show you is to use preloaded vendor libraries. And you can actually import libraries and tools into Fusion 360. So for example, if I click over here and click on download vendor libraries, it brings up all of the options for vendor libraries that I can download. So you can see Harvey, Helicam, and Armana. All right, great. If I click over on the Armana page, it's gonna take me to the Armana tool page for Fusion 360. All right. And you can see here, here's the Vatrix Infusion 360. Download, compete. 
and I can download the complete Fusion 360 database. Now, you'll see the warning that they should only be using conjunctions with these bits. Do not use them with other bit brands because the speeds and speeds may be different. All right, so then it's gonna pop up in my downloads. When it's in my downloads, you're gonna see it here as a tools file. Then I'm gonna navigate back to my tool library, right click, and I'm going to import libraries. So I can click on the Armada tools, click open, and you can see now I've got all of the Armada tools in here. If I want, now that's a lot of bits and you are very likely not in ownership of all of these bits. So once you find the ones that you do own, you can, let's say we've got a, you can again, copy those tools, move them over to your tutorial library and paste those tools. So, and you can see here, so it's got the product ID, the vendor description, it's got all the cutting information here. So the geometry and then cutting data is just the default preset. So you wanna double check this and make sure that you've got it set up for your materials. Hit accept and you are ready to go. All right, so let's check this tool. So going back to our shop vac dust collection system, we are going to click on this and let's go ahead and create a, a new setup. All right, let's see. So doesn't really matter here. Only thing I'm going to do really quick is change the origin. So the X axis is going to be this way. Y axis is going to be this way. Okay. All right. So now let's say I'm just going to go very quickly and do a 2D contour select the contour I want to cut. And you can see here, I can load in the tool. So that is going to be from the tutorials library. I'm going to do my quarter inch Jenny. And you can see that underneath the presets here, I've got plywood and my HDU, which I've also created. So I can select my presets and then that is going to fill out uh, my feed rates and my ramp rates, which is really great. Double, always double check those though. It's always important to double check to make sure that your geometry is doing what you're doing and hit okay. All right, so with that set up, I'm just gonna do a quick simulation here, hit play. And as you can see, only did one pass. So we're not doing any step downs by default. Didn't do that. But you can see I've got my quarter inch bit and it is moving through my workpiece, and we are good to go. If you need to make changes at any time, obviously you can click here on the tool library, go back to your tutorial bits and make the changes that you need. And that's it. Overall, pretty straightforward, pretty simple process. Once you understand what you're looking at and what information you need to find from the manufacturer's data sheet or website, it all should be pretty straightforward. And I will tell you, I think that Fusion 360 does a really good job of walking you through this. So no matter what type of bit you are going to be adding, whether it be an engraving bit or a slot milling bit, it should all be really straightforward to set this up. All right, if you like this video, please give us a like. In questions or comments, leave those below. And as always, hit the subscribe button to continue learning with Practical Alchemy. That is gonna be it for today, guys, and I will see you in the next one.